Hello everyone and welcome to the final episode of my F1 2020 My Team Career Mode uh, for the final two Grands Prix of the season, Brazil and Abu Dhabi. Uh, we're squeezing both of these into one episode to uh, just save a bit of time, make it a little bit easier to finish this off before uh, the next game comes out. So uh, over to you Crofty. Interlagos, always a very special race here in Brazil. It's a 2.7 mile circuit with nine lefts and six rights for a total of 15 corners. The fastest lap today should have an average speed of around 135 miles per hour. If, of course, the weather stays dry until the end of the Grand Prix. Joining me for today's race once again is Anthony Davidson. Let's talk about the scientists. They've had a fantastic campaign. It's been a wonderful year. And they come into this weekend's Grand Prix as a fully deserving champion. It really is well deserved. I wouldn't say it's been a faultless title challenge, but certainly one that has been consistent and well managed. Here's hoping they let off a bit of steam today and give us an exciting race. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Valtteri Bottas lines up on pole position, and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Ricardo, Gasly, Lando Norris, and Verstappen, Ocon, Kvyat, Grosjean. They've taken a grid penalty, and Carlos Sainz. Matsushita, Russell, Lance Stroll, and Magnussen, De Vries, Latifi, Alexander Albon, and the scientist, Perez. Joe, Giovinazzi, and Charles Leclerc completes today's grid order. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out. Then let's see who can prevail today. OK, we've already won the championship, so relax and enjoy this race. So I tried my best to start from the back of the grid here. Uh, you'll notice we skipped straight over qualifying. Uh, I qualified last uh, in Q1. But uh, due to some grid penalties, uh, we're still not going to start at the back of the grid. Uh, so uh, there we go, that is uh, that. But anyway, uh, you can see it's trying to sort out the strategy here. It is going to rain at some point later uh, in uh, the race. These are 50% races that we're doing uh, to uh, move things along uh, quickly. So here we go then to the five red lights. And away we go for the Brazilian Grand Prix in season two and it's a good start for us as we try and have a look down the inside of a whole bunch of cars into the first corner trying to find some space here and we'll just about uh, get through and uh, make up a few spots as we have a little bit of a loss of the back end there uh, through the center s and uh, we uh, thankfully maintain control as we're still fighting away side by side trying to defend uh, from k mag as we go up the inside and make another uh, overtaking move there and uh, get past the uh, Williams of Lance Stroll uh, but uh, there was a bit of contact with Magnussen on the inside here's the replay and uh, you can see uh, just clipped uh, Magnussen there on the inside as uh, he was uh, equally trying to uh, make a move on us but uh, thankfully we're able to uh, continue on our way uh, with no damage to either car uh, we also uh, slip past uh, the Haas of George Russell there and uh, make another position so we're flying through the field at this point down the inside and making the move on Nick De Vries, the other Haas so uh, charging through uh, the uh, back markers and midfield cars uh, at this point in the race so uh, let's see if we can uh, continue this forwards then as uh, there's uh, battles going on up ahead uh, between Matsushita uh, and Carlos Sainz the McLaren trying to go around the outside of the Japanese driver in the racing point and he's going to get through there and uh, Matsushita loses that position unfortunately the racing point car not seeing a lot of development over this season uh, they started off really strong uh, Matsushita in particular was fighting for some podiums and now uh, just uh, no form for that team and uh, they are struggling to get points uh, each weekend so uh, yeah it's been really unfortunate to see uh, their uh, I guess downfall but uh, as we go up the inside and uh, make the move on uh, Matsushita and uh, that's the thing I've noticed uh, in these uh, final uh, few races uh, that have been, uh, uh, these final two races rather, uh, we, as we have a look up the inside of science, no move there though, uh, I've noticed that uh, the fuel uh, is uh, very, very, uh, we're very well overfueled. I'll get there eventually. Um, we have a lot more fuel than we need, uh, so I uh, have to use Rich for pretty much the entire race and uh, we could still finish with laps and laps of extra fuel 
Um, so, yeah, it's a bit of a weird one. But, uh, yeah, I think because we didn't do practice ourselves, they just simulated practice for the final two races. Um, yeah, we always had excess fuel, particularly in Abu Dhabi. So, uh, yeah, that was uh, a bit of a strange one. But uh, anyway, we uh, still fighting our way through the field, get past uh, Remy Grosjean. Uh, our teammate there who has uh, been hit with the grid penalty in this one so unfortunately uh, our teammate uh, not looking so strong uh, in this race so far I'm sure he'll uh, find his way out to the field uh, the later on uh, but a uh, fast slap race of the race uh, for us and uh, we are uh, going strong in this one as we continue on though a uh, bit of a mistake there Grosjean's back up the inside we leave him a pile of space and uh, he gets back through and uh, we lose the position uh, to Remy Grosjean. Uh, we'll still try and dive back up the inside though and we'll get the move done but Grosjean with a switchback and we're going to be side by side but we will just about stay ahead uh, of our teammates and uh, maintain that position but uh, that was a bit more work uh, than what it really needed to be for us there and uh, now we can uh, once again try and focus on Ben Ocon. We go up the inside and make the move on the Frenchman uh, at uh, that same corner we make the dive on Remy Grosjean. Uh, next up uh, is actually the other Renault of Daniel Kafia. So uh, two Renaults running very close together uh, in this one. As we try and chase down the Russian though, bit of grass on the entry to turn one, very deep there. And uh, that's going to cost us a bunch of time and even a few positions as Ocon uh, gets back past us as well as Romain Grosch on Carlos Sainz side by side as we run uh, down towards uh, turn four. But uh, we'll manage to hold off the Spaniard and uh, continue like on our way. Expecting it in around five minutes. Five minutes until rain, and that's great news for us as we continue to try and fight again, though going very deep on the outside line, not quite getting the car pulled up, and uh, we have to uh, take the long way through the first couple of corners. Carlos Sainz uh, does get ahead of us this time, and we have to slot in behind, but uh, we've got a good run here in the slipstream. DRS will go back up the inside. No, we're not quite close enough to uh, Carlos Sainz to pull that off, and uh, we'll sit behind for a little bit longer. 7.5 seconds and uh, you'll also notice that Romain Grosjean is on the medium compound tyres uh, so that's why he's maybe struggling a little bit in these early phases but uh, if he can uh, make it until uh, the rain comes down and the soft tyre runners have to stop uh, that will work out well for him and uh, yeah that is uh, the target for Grosjean it's also the target for us uh, because I think we can stretch these soft tyres quite long in this race uh, it is a 50% race, so I think we get double the tyre wear, uh, but um, it shouldn't be too long until the rain's coming down anyway as we go up the inside of Carlos Sainz and uh, finally get that move done uh, once again uh, ahead of Carlos Sainz. Next up, though, is still our teammate. And uh, Pierre Gasly with a mechanical issue. He is uh, just ahead of this train uh, that we are following as another car uh, is uh, pulling into pits there, I think it's actually the first, uh, is Esteban Ocon, so uh, he is the first to blink, he doesn't think he can take his uh, soft compound tyres uh, to the point uh, where the inters will be useful. And uh, now we are being called in uh, to the box, but I don't think we're going to, uh, because you can see the water droplets on the screen as well as uh, struggling for grip through those first few corners and going in deep, uh, but yeah, with the raindrops on the screen, uh, I don't think it's worth making a stop now because uh, it won't be long until we go on to the Inters and as we continue on uh, more pit stops uh, being made and uh, we are elevated up into second position uh, with only Pierre Gasly on the hard compound tyres so he's done well uh, with a mechanical problem and the hard compound tyres uh, to hold on to some decent track position uh, we're probably going to be slower in terms of tyre speed uh, to Gasly with how worn our tyres are so uh, we will have an advantage uh, due to his, uh, his, due to his uh, mechanical problems as we have a problem of our own on the <laughs> exit curb there. But uh, yeah, with Gasly's mechanical problems, um, it's uh, still bringing him back towards us despite the fact his tyres will be in much better condition than ours uh, at this point. Uh, as well as, uh, I'm sure he would just be better uh, on, in these uh, conditions as we slip up the inside though and uh, make that move so yeah you can clearly see Gasly just lacking a bit of pace through the corners uh, due to those mechanical issues but the, the pace difference is nothing like what it was uh, for uh, Danny Kafiat back in Russia 
uh, or George Russell in Mexico uh, when they had mechanical issues. So, uh, yeah, that is that. But uh, we continue on, and uh, it's surely got to be time soon for us to make our stop. Where our tyres are absolutely screaming for help, but uh, Gasly pits there, and uh, he is uh, going. Uh, to uh, try to get an undercut on us but what tyres will he be going on to? Will he go on to the soft tyres for the rest of the race or will he switch uh, to the intermediate tyre compound? Uh, we slow things down to see and he is going on to the intermediates so uh, he is the first to blink and uh, switch on to uh, that compound. Uh, we're not going to respond on the next lap uh, for us. Uh, we're going to continue to push on. And that is why, uh, but we will respond on uh, the lap after that and uh, finally come in uh, for our stop because our tyres just wouldn't have lasted any longer as seriously risking exit, a puncture exit. on the right front. So uh, yeah, we uh, just had to uh, go for it in the Up end. I was trying now. to wait and see uh, if it was tires. worth the switch onto inters or if we were just going to go mediums for the rest of the race. but. Uh, yeah, I decided to just go for the Inter, same uh, lap as uh, that Mercedes car uh, right behind us uh, of Valtteri Bottas. So uh, that uh, it, we're not, we didn't do it late uh, as such. Gasly was actually a lot earlier than everyone else. But uh, as we continue on, uh, struggling for pace a little bit, it's got to be said. And uh, we are just going to have to continue this uh, defense uh, because Bottas is right behind us and putting the pressure on. Uh, we should be faster than these Mercedes cars, but uh, yeah, we're just struggling to... Uh, keep them at bay uh, at this point. Bottas uh, really close behind us uh, through this section. And, uh, you are currently in P3. Ock on ahead. Gap to car in front is 4.7 seconds. They're on old hearts. Bottas behind. They're on fresh inters. Okay, gap to leader. 5.4 seconds. Pit strategy complete. See these tyres through to the end now. 11 laps to go. So yeah, and with 11 laps to go, uh, Bottas round the outside but he's not going to get the move done there. We're going to be able to hold the inside line. We give him the room, but he's still uh, just not able to keep the car there around the outside, and we maintain the position. Uh, but, yeah, the uh, just the grip isn't here. The tyre is just... Uh, it, it almost feels like we're on a dry track. And, uh, I mean, visually, the track doesn't look so bad. So I think we uh, may have made the wrong call here. I think dry tyres might be the way to go. As you can see, Esteban Ocon... Uh, never moved on to the Inters, he stayed on hard compound tyres. So, uh, as we pit, we're going to go on to the uh, soft compound tyres, we've driven on the Inters, so uh, that means uh, we don't have to abide by the two different uh, slick tyre compounds uh, rule anymore. Uh, so we can go uh, you know, soft tyres at the start and soft tyres at the end. So uh, that is uh, great for us, we can push flat out to the end, and so will the other cars around us, uh, all bar Esteban Ocon who is going to continue on the hard compound tyres. It's going to be very interesting. He could score an absolutely brilliant result here by making two less pit stops. He's going to be very slow at the end on aging hard compound tyres, but he could have pulled an absolute blinder here. He might even win this race uh, if we can't catch him. And 8.4 uh, seconds uh, to Pierre Gasly uh, up ahead. Uh, we continue on. Uh, Grosjean the last to make the stop from Inters back onto the dry compound tyres. But uh, you can see there in the top left now Esteban Ocon leading the way and uh, Pierre Gasly in second position chasing him down on the soft compound tyres and here they are uh, fighting away and Ocon is just ahead at the moment. Gasly with a good slipstream here but he's not quite going to get there and Ocon will hold on uh, for uh, at least uh, one more lap. Uh, no overtaking through the middle sector, but as we continue on, uh, Gasly round the outside into the center S, and it's going to be difficult for Ocon to defend this one as Gasly is through on the inside, and uh, he is clear. Gasly takes the lead of the Brazilian Grand Prix. Ocon down into second position. Uh, right after that, we uh, put a lap on uh, one of the alphas there. I think that was Kevin Magnussen, uh, who's uh, obviously had a bit of a rough day here uh, in Brazil. And uh, now we are rapidly closing up uh, onto the back of Ocon down the inside into the first corner on the final lap of the race side by side uh, with the Frenchman uh, through the center S and we just about get out in front and uh, that is a late move but we managed to get through. Ocon really didn't see us coming on the inside but uh, we got ahead of the Frenchman who is I think going to do enough to stay on the podium here. Uh, Bottas I don't think 
uh, is going to be close enough to Esteban Ocon to really do anything uh, along the runs of the line. So uh, it's going to be a great effort from Esteban Ocon. It's going to net him a huge 15 points and a podium finish uh, in that Renault. So uh, a great job uh, by the Frenchman uh, here today. Uh, another Frenchman doing a good job though. Uh, further up the road is Pierre Gasly in the Alpha Tauri. I'm not exactly sure how he ended up in this position, but he's done it, Pierre Gasly. Uh, a few seconds up the road from us, we just couldn't uh, catch the Frenchman. We've got really great pace in these closing stages, but uh, it's just not enough uh, to catch up uh, to Pierre Gasly, who is going to win the Brazilian Grand Prix. Pierre Gasly, a race winner in F1. We cross the line for P2. Can't complain about that one. That was an excellent drive. And uh, from where we started, I will certainly take second place. Uh, that was that was great. I really enjoyed. Uh, starting from the back, that was uh, a lot of fun. It's certainly been an incredible year for Formula One, and our drivers have all pushed themselves this season, making it one of the most compelling years of racing in history. There can only be one champion, however, and here they are now, our new Formula One World Drivers' Champion. We've witnessed some great battles around the historic curves of Interlagos today, and they've taken a fantastic win. Anthony Davidson, a resounding victory today. What set them apart from the rest? I'd say it was down once again to good, consistent driving. Nailing the corners, working to the track conditions and perfecting the team's strategies. They got all of these things right today and the results speak for themselves. And look at this, they're coming out now. Alpha Tori have developed something of a reputation for forging exciting new talent. And we can see that here. Incredible victory. So it is Pierre Gasly who wins the Brazilian Grand Prix. We finish up in second position with Esteban Ocon making it two Frenchmen on the podium. Great effort. Well, I mentioned it briefly, but I really enjoyed that race uh, around this track, uh, starting at the back and uh, fighting through. Uh, unfortunately, we just didn't quite have enough for Pierre Gasly. If this was a 100% race I think we could have got there and uh, we would have probably had uh, a bit more of a fight with the Mercedes cars as well but uh, yeah the 50% race uh, short distance and uh, yeah very uh, challenging to try and get to the front uh, even versus the Alfa Tauri which is a very rapid car uh, it's got to be said P.A. Gasly uh, despite having uh, those issues mid-race uh, that slowed him down uh, he managed to hold on uh, for the win so uh, that uh, is the second time this season actually that's happened because uh, uh, Danny Kvyat uh, did uh, a similar thing uh, in Japan but uh, there were no wet conditions to help him there that was uh, just uh, defensive driving and uh, just uh, getting the most out of the car that wasn't fast uh, for Danny Kvyat and uh, a similar thing I suppose can be said for Pierre Gasly uh, because uh, even with the uh, mechanical issues, uh, he was still very quick uh, around this circuit. Uh, the uh, tyre compound choice uh, certainly helped him there at the start of this race. Uh, I believe that actually uh, is uh, from... Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but he potentially got into Q3 on hard compound tyres. I think he started in the top 10, so I'm not 100% sure if that's true or not. Um, Oh, we'll have to uh, check back on the grid uh, order, but yeah, he was, whatever happened anyway, he was very, very good today. So uh, yeah, well done to uh, Pierre Gasly uh, on uh, a race win, huge number of points for him, and uh, he'll be pretty happy uh, about that. But uh, anyway, uh, other than that, there is uh, not a lot left uh, to cover for this race, so uh, now we will uh, just get into the... Uh, season finale in Abu Dhabi. Let's see if we can finish on a high. It's time then for one final race in this year's Formula One World Championship. 2010 saw four drivers in contention for the title coming into this race, with Sebastian Vettel prevailing to become the youngest world champion to date. Is there one last sting of the tail awaiting us today? Well, it's time to find out 
Here comes the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. We have 21 corners here at the AS Marina circuit, 12 to the left and 9 to the right. It's a total lap distance of just over 3.4 miles. There are two long back straights opening up some passing opportunities into the braking zones. And we expect average lap speeds of around 123 miles an hour. Also here, of course, is Anthony Davidson. Let's talk about the scientist. What a season they've had. A well-deserved championship victory and the pressure now surely off with the title already in the bag. I agree it's been a truly impressive season, but championship or no, I don't think they'll be gently cruising around to the finish line. In fact, with points no longer a concern, there's a lot less to risk, so we may even see a more aggressive approach. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. A fantastic qualifying from Roman Grosjean yesterday puts him on pole, and Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Bottas, Albon, Max Verstappen, and Leclerc, Gasly, Joe, Ricardo. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty, and Nobuharu Matsushita, Kvyat, Russell, Lance Stroll and Magnussen, Sainz, Latifi, Lando Norris and Antonio Giovinazzi, Perez, The Scientist, Ocon and Nick De Vries. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track and get this Grand Prix underway. OK, we've already won the championship, so relax and enjoy this race. Indeed, we have already uh, locked away the Drivers' and Constructors' Championships, so this last race we can uh, just have some fun. Not a cloud in the sky, just the uh, standard and nighttime conditions here in Abu Dhabi. And uh, once again, you know, this time I just skipped qualifying completely. I didn't even qualify last. I just skipped straight over it. And still, uh, we're not last on the grid, we're 20th, so uh, close enough as we now get ready to go to the uh, five red lights. And away we go for the final time on F1 2020, and it's a decent start for us as we head down towards uh, turn number one, send it into the first corner, and we found a little bit of a gap uh, on the inside of the McLaren there, and we'll see if we can now drag him uh, up towards turn two, and we do just that and uh, get ahead as uh, we are also running a different livery, you may notice the 70th anniversary uh, livery as we uh, go up the inside trying to make more overtakes here and trying to position ourselves in a good place uh, to get a nice run onto the straight, trying to get the inside line here so we can just turn the car, point it down the straight and uh, power along in the slipstream uh, of the cars ahead as uh, we leave Kevin Magnussen behind and uh, try to chase down uh, the next uh, couple of cars, we're going to go for a double overtake down the inside and we get it done uh, before the apex nicely uh, nicely stopped there, but very deep into the next right-hander, just uh, not uh, turning uh, pretty much, and uh, we lose those spots again, so that was great. But uh, let's see if we can get them back as we head uh, towards the triple Cane, switch through the middle and uh, get those two spots back. So uh, fighting hard here uh, with George Russell and Danny Kvyat, and uh, we uh, end up... Uh, out on top uh, ahead of those two. Next up is Matsushita uh, who is again uh, having uh, a bit of a struggle here uh, in the uh, final race of the season. Uh, not reflective of uh, the pace he showed earlier on. So uh, yeah, disappointment uh, for him and, uh, and that team. But uh, anyway, we uh, continue on and uh, we'll try and uh, continue this form, try and continue uh, our way forwards uh, through the pack and uh, just uh, try and keep this momentum going because we've made uh, a good start and uh, after just one lap we found ourselves almost still in the top 10 knocking on the door and now opening the door to the outside of Nobuharu Matsushita and we make the move around the outside into uh, this uh, wobbly section uh, which we may not see uh, too many more times in the future that's being changed into a nice uh, Banks corner by uh, what they have been saying that will be interesting to see as we go up the inside no yes maybe and up the inside finally uh, of Daniel Ricciardo and we make the move stick oh we don't we get a hit uh, from our fellow Australian and sends us uh, into a half spin there very lucky for us not to hit the wall on the outside but that's cost us a bunch of time Here's the onboard with Daniel Ricciardo, and uh, to be fair to him, we did really pinch him on the apex. He didn't really have anywhere to go there, so uh, that's all fair, uh, I think. And we go back up the inside anyway. Bit of an aggressive move there, but uh, now back ahead 
the, of Daniel, Daniel Ricardo. And uh, next up is Guan Yu Zhou, uh, the Chinese driver. And uh, we're going to make an equally aggressive move on him up the inside and uh, finding our way through uh, at the uh, triple chicane here. And uh, ahead now of the Chinese driver in the racing point ahead of his teammates. And our radio is broken. But uh, anyway, Tony Giovinazzi retires from the race with a mechanical failure. And it's time for us to come into the pits uh, right behind Pierre Gasly, uh, who we uh, fought so hard to try and catch up to at the end of the last one. Didn't work out for us uh, in the end. But uh, anyway, new tyres on and uh, we're underway uh, once again uh, for this race. One stop left uh, in the strategy and uh, now we can uh, push uh, flat out on these medium compound tyres. One thing, I accidentally changed the uh, front wing uh, in uh, the pit stop there so uh, we are running much lower downforce uh, than what we were before. So that's a bit of a goof. Uh, I didn't mean to do that but uh, yeah, it just happened. Uh, just, uh, press the wrong button at some point and uh, we're running significantly less uh, front downforce so yeah that was a bit of a pain but uh, anyway we switch to the outside and get past uh, the Ferrari there and almost into the back of Alexander Albon that was very close as we were uh, focused on Leclerc uh, didn't realize that Albon would, would be uh, so hard on the brakes in a queue of cars uh, so that was uh, almost a disaster for us but uh, thankfully we were able to avoid in any contact with the back of the Red Bull and now we can try and chase him down as uh, we uh, retake our uh, corrected position of sixth place now so potentially a bit of an undercut on some of the cars because I don't think we were running quite that high before the pit stops we may have been but uh, yeah we have uh, really pulled ourselves back into contention in this one uh, after starting at the back so uh, now we can try and uh, fight with uh, the uh, leading teams here uh, with Albon uh, just up the road and uh, that lack of downforce though giving us a bit of extra straight line speed I think because we're actually able to carry a lot of speed towards the end of the straights and that is helping us make these overtakes so uh, despite being quite understeery through the corners uh, it's actually uh, not so bad uh, along the straights and uh, it's certainly uh, helping us make these overtakes and uh, once again you can see carrying a lot of speed on the straight there and we're able to get up the inside of the Ferrari of uh, Max Verstappen and uh, move ourselves up into the top four uh, where we uh, really should be fighting uh, with the two Mercs. We continue on and our next target Valtteri Bottas we go up the inside and uh, make the move on him and that's another thing that's giving us uh, quite an amount of understeer uh, is uh, being so heavy on fuel uh, because I skipped practice, uh, they overfueled the car for me, and uh, that is Nicholas Latifi uh, retiring the car with a mechanical failure. Unfortunate for the Canadian, not finishing the final race uh, of the season. He'll go join Antonio Giovinazzi and watch this one uh, from the sidelines. But uh, for us, it's time uh, for our final stop because the safety car is out, and uh, we're going to use this opportunity uh, to make uh, that stop. At this point, I didn't actually realize that my front wing had been adjusted. All the understeer I was feeling, I just assumed were the medium tires, just not gripping up as well as the softs. So, uh, yeah, I did. that was really annoying uh, that I only noticed this uh, in editing that I accidentally changed uh, the front wing. You can even see it on the uh, MFD uh, at some points. But uh, anyway, we continue on and uh, continue trying to fight uh, through the field and uh, try and uh, close up uh, to these cars ahead. Uh, Charles Leclerc uh, still needs to make another stop in this race. He didn't pit under the safety car, so uh, Grosjean taking the uh, overall lead as Leclerc finally does make that stop. And uh, we will now uh, take the fight to Lewis Hamilton uh, for second position as uh, we try and close up to the Brit. And uh, you can see uh, oh, Hamilton's got an issue, so that's going to mean he's going to be struggling. We're not that close to him, so we might not be able to get him on the straights this time, but uh, right now, uh, this time next lap we might be on the back of him we continue on and you can see we are uh, taking a wide line straightening up the exit and getting the power down really nicely out of the hairpin and now we've got a great run on Lewis Hamilton DRS open the straight line speed working for us and we just sail past the Brit uh, he has absolutely no defense from that and uh, we've already got uh, quite a few car lengths by the time we put the brakes on uh, for the chicane and uh, we're clear of Lewis Hamilton uh, in this race 
Uh, the next car up the road is our teammate, so what are we going to be able to do about him? Three and a half seconds uh, up to our teammate. And okay, we're losing time, but that lap we were stuck behind Hamilton, so uh, in clear air, I think we may just uh, be a little bit faster uh, than our teammates, so uh, we're going to uh, try and chase him down and see uh, what we can do. Try and put in some consistent laps uh, from here to the end and see if we can close that gap uh, to our teammate. So uh, as we continue on, you can see visually we are a lot closer uh, to Remy Grosjean as we're really pushing uh, the track limits there and uh, lucky to VSC get away deployed. with it. And the VSC is deployed and uh, that is uh, for this incident. Albon into the wall, front wing smashing into a million pieces and uh, the red wheel driver uh, losing a ton of position to need to make a pit stop now as well. Uh, but this is why uh, the Ferrari and Alfatari battling away in front and Albon just losing the back end deciding which way to go left or right uh, and he found the wall uh, in the process but uh, we get racing once again and uh, now you can see we are really close to Grosjean but it's the final lap of the race so we really don't have a lot of time to try and make this move uh, on our teammate so uh, this is going to be a late move we go up the inside into the hairpin there the right hander in the final sector we barge our teammate out of the way in the process and uh, here's a replay on board that's a better camera angle actually uh, of the uh, move and uh, we finally take the lead but uh, at about this point I decided you know what Grosjean is third in the standings we're going to do our best to make a second for him so we're going to give the spot back in the only way we know how smash it into the wall as we cross the line Grosjean's going to win this one P2 for us and uh, I feel like that's a bit more fair because that was a bit of an aggressive overtake it's got to be said uh, but uh, we still get the driver of the day that's it then they've taken the win here as we wrap up another fantastic formula one season and talk to me what do you think it was that sealed the win for them well the safety car completely changed the race didn't it it's hard to say exactly what would have happened without it but there's no question that they came out of that situation in a good position here comes your top three making their way down to the podium for what can only be described as a fantastic day for Formula One. So there we have it, Remy Grosjean wins the final race of the season. Great job by him uh, and his final race of his career as well. Uh, Peace through for us in uh, what is also our final race uh, in this game and Max Verstappen in third. And that is it uh, for this one. Unfortunately, uh, that wasn't enough for Grosjean to uh, take th uh, take second in the standings, but uh, it was worth a try. But uh, yeah, there we have it. <laughs> the end of this one. Uh, this 70th anniversary livery, livery looks so ridiculous. I had to do it for the final race. I think we used it once before for the uh, British Grand Prix in uh, season one, uh, but. Uh, yeah, I remember, I think we had a great battle with our teammate in that one too, but uh, yeah, we uh, yeah, threw this livery on the car just for a, uh, for a bit of fun in this final one, but yeah, unfortunately couldn't bring the win for us this time, we were very close, another couple of laps we may have gotten close enough to Grosjean, but uh, yeah, it wasn't to be uh, on this occasion, um, but uh, yeah. Enjoy these final two races uh, of the season, these uh, just 50% races starting at the back. Uh, it was quite fun, uh, but uh, of course when we uh, get to uh, the next game I'll be going back to the usual 100% uh, distance format. Uh, I feel like when you do 50% races it does occasionally sort of break the strategy system for the other cars. It's just not quite designed for the shorter races, it works better uh, over the long distance ones and uh, you get a bit more strategy uh, variety as well sometimes in the longer ones so uh, yeah that uh, is why I do that and uh, also it's uh, I don't know I kind of just like the uh, longer races more time for uh, to recover when bad stuff happens and more, start, more time for crazy things uh, to happen but uh, anyway uh, that uh, we'll just about do it uh, for uh, not just this episode but uh, this uh, entire series uh, 43 episodes uh, same as F1 uh, 2019 strangely enough but uh, anyway so yes thank you so much for watching uh, to the end and 
I will see you next time for F1 2021 very, very shortly. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Oh, you're still here? Well, here's a little bonus, uh, if you want. So, uh, I decided to see what happens if you uh, don't sign a new driver, uh, and uh, you just keep uh, intentionally screwing up the negotiations uh, before as you get into the new season, and uh, it gives you a uh, reserve driver, and they are absolutely awful. Look at these stats. Overall rating, 25. Uh, and yeah, 25 experience, 25 race class, 20 race craft, uh, 25 awareness, 25 pace. Absolutely awful. So uh, I was wondering, what does that actually look like in terms of race pace? We've got the best car uh, in this season, so if we simulate the race, what result does that translate to? Well, it's not great, as you can see. 16th. We won with the simulated time. But uh, anyway, now finally that is going to do us. So uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.